Hi, I'm Amy from East Bears, and in this video, I'll be sharing with you some tips to help you run and maintain your vacuum cleaner more safely. For anyone who's already following us, you'll know that we have a whole bunch of these safety videos. So if you're interested in improving the general safety of your household appliances, we'll link the full playlist down in the description below and also at the end of this video. Or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel as we regularly put out appliance safety videos. But first, your vacuum cleaner. A good general safety rule is to keep kids and pets out of the way when you're vacuuming. Vacuuming can be potentially hazardous to them as they can get hit by a piece of dirt or debris that's flung out the back of the machine or tangled up in the cord. Make sure that kids and pets aren't running or crawling by your feet as it's particularly hazardous when you're vacuuming the stairs, as you might trip. Whilst most vacuum cleaners are pretty versatile around the home on both hard floors and carpets, there are some things that you should never vacuum. Don't try to pick up larger objects like screws, coins or bits of gravel that have been tracked in on someone's shoes. These items could damage your cleaner as they move through it, or if they're too heavy to be picked up, they could get thrown out the back of your vacuum at speed and even injure you if they hit you on the legs. Water and electricity don't mix, so don't be tempted to use your vacuum to suck up spillages unless it's specifically designed to do so. Wipe down damp kitchen and bathroom floors before vacuuming, and don't be tempted to use your vacuum to suck up spillages from the carpet. In most cases, your vacuum won't remove stains, so it's best to always treat it with a stain remover. Our next tip is to be cautious of sucking up damp leaves, mud and food scraps. So moisture from these can get into the internal parts of your machine, causing fires or faults. Once they're inside your machine too, they also run the risk of going mouldy, so it's best just to pick these up by hand. Although one of the main tasks of your vacuum cleaner is to remove dust, too much dust or powder can clump together inside your machine and cause blockages. So if you've got the builders in or a particularly dusty area in your house that needs cleaning, or you've spilled a powdery substance, it's best to sweep it up as best as you can before vacuuming. Our next tip is to be wary about what you're vacuuming. If you come across a mystery substance in your shed, your garage or your cleaning cupboard, be sure to get to the bottom of what it is first and then sweep it away rather than whipping out your machine. If it's flammable, it could turn out to be a fire hazard and if it's toxic, it could be a hazard to you when you come to empty your machine. On the note of emptying your machine, be careful when you do this in general. Pet dander, allergens, bacteria, fungi and viruses can all be inside your machine. So make sure when you empty the bin or remove the bag, you do it as fast as you can whilst disturbing the contents as little as possible. Make sure that you use a bin with a lid so that any particles rising are stuck inside it and it will also help keep the area around the bin clean. If you have a bagless upright vacuum or a handheld like this, then make sure you empty the bin after every single use, as dirt, which is a breeding ground for bacteria, can build up inside your machine. Be sure to empty the bin as soon as the dust hits the fill line as well, or on this Dyson handheld, the max line here. Continuing to vacuum after this can mean that dirt and fluff can block your machine, reducing suction and performance, and can even lead to overheating. If you have a bagged vacuum like this one, make sure that you replace the bag when it's three quarters full. When maintaining your vacuum cleaner by cleaning out the internal parts, like the filter, do this outside on a dry day. That way you won't be breathing in as much dust and you won't have a big mess to clean up when you're done. As you can see, on this machine we have two filters located here and here, both of which are in desperate need of a clean. You can also give the internal chassis a wipe to remove any excess dust while we're here. Our next tip is to make sure that the cord is out of the way when vacuuming. So if you vacuum over it, this could damage the wire and make it unsafe if it frays and exposes the internal wires. You should also avoid sharp edges and corners as this will cause general wear and tear over time. You should also make sure that you don't pull your vacuum round by the power cable as this will loosen the power connection and cause it to short circuit, which will damage your machine. Remember that if you do damage the cord, you can replace it rather than buying a whole new machine. We'll put a link down below as to where you can find these on our website should you ever need a new one. Our next tip is to make sure you always unplug your appliance when you finish vacuuming. So if you leave it plugged in, this could be a trip hazard which could damage the plug, the cable or the person. If you're using an extension lead, be sure that it's compatible with the wattage of your appliance because if you use the wrong extension lead, this could damage your vacuum and increase the risk of a fire. Our next piece of advice is to be aware of appliance safety recalls. 
we really, really recommend that you take the time to register your vacuum with the manufacturer as soon as you get it. If you've had your vacuum cleaner for a while, you can do a quick internet search to check that it's not on any recall lists. Now appliance recall is when the manufacturer identifies a serious problem with your appliance and you should stop using it straight away and get the problem sorted. For more information on appliance safety recalls, check out our video up here. Our last piece of advice is something that you'll hear us say all of the time at the beginning of our appliance repair videos, and that is to make sure your machine is switched off and disconnected before carrying out any work on it. If your vacuum loses suction or cuts out, we really recommend that you look into these rather than throwing away your machine. Cleaning the filter, unblocking the hose, or removing hair or thread wrapped around the brush bar could be all it takes to bring your vacuum back to full working order. Just make sure that it's switched off and disconnected before you start working on it, even if it appears to have stopped working. If that brush bar starts spinning again at high speed and your fingers are in the way, that could result in a nasty injury. So there we have it. I hope you've learned how to clean your floors more efficiently and safely with your vacuum cleaner. And for more videos on appliance safety, make sure you check them out down below or hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.